Ahoy hoy, I'm Plan Walk, and in a recent video of mine, I asked if people would like to see me debunk Kent Hovind. And the answer was an overwhelming yes. Now the video that I want to take a look at by Kent is not one of his usual tirades on evolution. No, it is a video about what holds atoms together. And yes, I have double checked that this is indeed Kent Hovind and not Ken Wheeler. I can see why some people might get them confused though. Also, this video is sponsored by Skillshare, but more about that later on in the video. What holds the atom together? The strong nuclear force. That was easy. Leave a like and subscribe if you like this video. Leave a comment. Okay, I suppose I should take a listen to what Kent is going to say about it. What? Well, you ever think about that? People don't think about it. Atoms, the proteins, the... the a proton in the middle is positive particles. Shouldn't they repel each other except in San Francisco? You know, I think Kent and Nigel Cheesy Hands would get along very well. The only difference is that Kent is being a lot more subtle about it right here. Oops. But whatever Kent was trying to say there aside, what's the bet that Kent is not going to understand the concept of net forces here? I go to drdino.com, say I want to help them guys win souls. That's all we want around here. You know, when you phrase it like that, you don't sound like the good guys. It sounds like you're trying to steal people's souls. And let's face it, you probably are. They shall turn away their ears from the truth and be turned into fables. The dumbest fable in the world is that we came from a rock. Ah yes, because magically coming from dirt just makes so much more sense. I ask you, Kent, when was the last time that you ever saw dirt turn into a human? That is the question that should be asked whenever Kent says, now tell me, when have you ever seen a dog produce a kangaroo? Anyway, evolution isn't the main focus of this video, so let's skip ahead quite a bit. Paul, an apostle of Jesus Christ by the will of God. Hey, what's God's will for your life? You ever ask him? What, what, God, what do you want me to do? Get alone today and ask him. You know, I actually don't know what God wants from me. Why don't I ask him? God, what do you want from me? Um, a response would be nice if you can give me one of them. No response. I guess he's probably busy partying with aliens or something. I'll let you know if he ever gives me a response. What are you filling your head with? Video games? Sports? Movies? What are you filling your head with? He said, I wish you could be filled with the knowledge of his will. That is a good question, Kent. And in fact, I have been filling my head with knowledge from today's sponsor, Skillshare. Skillshare is an online learning platform with thousands of different classes in all kinds of topics from physics to music to video creation. The classes are fun, high quality, and most importantly, very informative. I myself have taken a class called Essential Lighting Skills and Techniques for Video and Content Creators by InProcess to try and make my videos look better. I've discovered that there are some pretty simple techniques that I'll be able to utilize in the future to add a bit more visual flair to my videos, as well as discovering some of the things that I did wrong with lighting in the past. There are plenty of other classes that have caught my eye, such as a class on how to play piano in 30 days, because I can't actually play that well, at least not yet anyway. I've actually been wanting to learn it for a long time so I can more easily write music, but I haven't really known where to start. It may be pretty daunting, but I'm a firm believer that the easiest way to achieve something is to take things step by step, which fortunately Skillshare has made pretty easy with the way that their classes are structured. So if there's something that you'd be interested in learning, why not check out Skillshare? The first 1,000 people to use the link in the description will get a one month free trial of Skillshare. And by doing that, you'll be supporting this channel. Anyway, I hope that answers your question, Kent. Are you making God angry? Or are you making him happy? Does he look down and say, that's my son? Well, I actually have no idea because he hasn't responded to me. If he does respond to me, I'll be able to ask him. Although I suppose if he was angry at me, he might respond to me just to give me a piece of his mind, right? How, what is gravity and how does it work? Well, do you want the simple version or do you want the complicated version? Because the complicated version involves 4D space-time. The simple version is just mass attracts mass and has a formula of F equals G times M1 times N2 over R squared. G is the gravitational constant, M1 is the mass of the first object, M2 is the mass of the second object, and R is the distance between the center of each object. Under Newtonian gravity, this is a force that pulls objects together. Very simple. What is it? Give me a jar of it, please. Paint it red. How much does a gallon of gravity weigh? Hey, Kent, uh, repeat what you just said there, but slowly, and just think about what causes weight for a second. 
Obviously what he's saying there is ridiculous because gravity is not a physical object, it is a field. Now this does mean that gravity is everywhere, but I can't isolate it in a jar like you could do with any physical object. This is an invisible force, isn't it? Called the force of gravity. I can tell you what it does on Earth, how it attracts you at 32 feet per second per second, and, or 9.8 meters per second per second. On different planets, it's different amounts, but that didn't tell me what it is, calling it, it's a force. Oh, stop, stop, stop. What is it? What's well, a force? I know. Show it to me. A force is simply mass times acceleration. So if an object is accelerating, that object is experiencing a force. Now, you can see the effect of forces like gravity and magnetism, but you can't actually see forces themselves because. Forces aren't objects. You see, a force is a verb rather than a noun because it describes what something does rather than what something is. It would be like me asking you, can you give me a jar of spin? You can't do that because spin is not something that something is, it's something that something does. You might ask me, but what about the gravitational field? Isn't that a noun? And that is true, it is a noun, but a field is more of a concept rather than a thing that you can actually pick up and show someone. A field is essentially a concept that can be used to describe every point in space. Now just because a field is a concept doesn't mean that fields aren't formed by something out there. In fact, there's a whole standard model to describe that kind of stuff. For example, the gravitational field may actually be produced by a particle known as the graviton. Unfortunately, the graviton has never actually been observed. So for now, gravitational fields are just a useful concept that helps us describe things that actually happen in reality. Nobody knows for sure what gravity is. Imagine two or more extra dimensions of space curled up into regions too small for us to directly sense. Hmm. Wow. This is the physics department. Imagine a chunk of gravity as a vibrating string. I, I'm sorry, you lost me. I can't imagine that. Well, fortunately, regardless of whether you can imagine it or not, doesn't change whether it's actually happening. Imagine space itself twisting and curving near a black hole. This is the amazing world of gravitation research. What did he just say? Imagine, imagine, yeah, that's all you can do with it, okay? You know, it helps to be able to visualize things in your head when you're trying to learn complex things. Visualizing things in your head is a form of imagining. Newton added greatly to our understanding of how gravity works, but we still don't know why gravity works. And guess what? They still don't today. Here's the thing, Kent, you can never know 100% why something works. We do have a good idea of how gravity works, but it is incomplete. You can try and ask why does relativity work the way that it does, but eventually it gets to a point where things just are the way that they are. That may be an unsettling answer for some people, but it is an answer that I am okay with. And I certainly do not need to just make up my own reasons. By the way, what holds the nucleus together of an atom? You know, electrons are negatively charged and like charges repel. Except in San Francisco. You know, that joke wasn't funny the first time, Kent. So you should probably just retire it. Actually, there's a lot of things that you should retire. The protons are positive. Why, do, why doesn't the nucleus fly apart? They've been wondering this for years. I did all the research I could do on it, and I discovered they still don't know. Well, you must not have done a lot of research because I found out pretty easily that it is the strong nuclear force. What holds the nucleus together? Huh. They call it the strong force. Okay, calling it a force doesn't tell me exactly what it is. Oh, so you did actually find it. Well, let me tell you that a force actually does tell you what it is. Because a force is simply something that causes things to accelerate. Very simple. However, if you want to delve into the more complex stuff, there are particles called gluons which are the force carriers for the strong nuclear force. The wonders of the standard model. The strong nuclear force, responsible for holding atomic nuclei and individual protons and neutrons together. Guys, giving it a name, strong nuclear force, still doesn't tell me what it is, or who made it, or why. Well, it just works. Forget it. No, I'm not going to forget it. I would like to know why. Well, if you want to delve further into the strong force, look into gluons. They explain the interactions that happen. Yes, it is some complex science stuff, but 
Nobody ever said that it was going to be simple. Also, just because something exists, it doesn't mean that it needs to be made by someone. Just putting it out there. The force of gravity keeps all the planets in orbit around the sun. I agree. I understand it pretty well. Taught our science for years. <laughs> Kent teaching science. Uh, good one, Kent. This is telling me what gravity does. Let's see. Gravity is an invisible force. It, tell, it doesn't tell me what it is. Kent, maybe try reading the stuff that is on your screen there. It literally says, Albert Einstein described gravity as a curve in space that wraps around an object. That's telling you what it is, Kent. Does it? Am I missing something here? Yes, Kent, you are missing something here. It's words that are on the page that you're reading from. But what is it? Who made gravity? Hmm. No one made it, Kent. It just is. It's called the strong interaction. Its origins lie in the particles lurking inside both protons and neutrons called quarks. Oh, the proton is real tiny. Okay? Like real, real, real tiny. And they got stuff inside of it called a quark. Hmm, okay. Yep, and protons and neutrons each have three quarks, which are combinations of up and down quarks. These possess a weird form of charge, whimsically termed color, which glues them together inside their host particles. So the quarks are glued together. Mm, where'd the glue come from? And also seeps out. Oh boy, that sounds like a silly question, but it actually comes from particles named gluons. Very aptly named. You know, maybe just research the stuff a little bit more. Let's see. Strong interaction. On a larger scale, the force, it is the force that binds protons and neutrons, nucleons, together to form the nucleus of an atom. Mm. On the smaller scale, less than about a you know, little bitty tiny, real small, okay? Uh, the force carried by gluons that holds quarks together. Is anybody not understanding this? I think they're talking. Yeah, that's it. You literally read the part about gluons, you know, the thing that carries the force, and you're like, yeah, I, I don't know what's going on here. Like, did it just go in one eyeball and... Well, it come out somewhere, certainly. Kent, you have to be being willfully ignorant here. You you read the part about gluons, right? You you read the same thing that I read, right? Did it just not... What, what happened? How are the protons and neutrons held together? Let's see. It's just, they're held together in the nucleus by the strong force. Oh, that explains it. He... He's still looking for an answer. Despite the fact that the answer, the gluons, that's what he's looking for, but it just didn't do the <sighs> The strong force gets its name by being the strongest attractive force. Well, you chose a good name, guys, okay? Yeah, physicists don't really put a lot of effort into naming things. Usually busy doing science. How exactly does gravity work? You're quite right that the other fundamental forces of nature possess media, uh, mediator particles. The photon for the electromagnetic force. For gravity, a graviton particle has been postulated. Has anybody ever seen a graviton particle? Okay, so let me try to intelligence more than what Kent makes me able to do. Graviton particles. Why haven't they been observed before? The reason being is to observe them, you would need a very, very long particle collider. One that would be unable to be built here on Earth. If I'm remembering correctly, you would need a particle accelerator that is as long as the Milky Way. That's a long distance. That is why we are currently unable to observe them. Maybe one day we will observe them, but at the moment they're just hypothetical. Now, when you're driving along the highway, and there's a tree limb hanging over the top. Is gravity pulling on that tree limb? So are you driving through these graviton particles? Does it scratch your windshield? Does it do anything? I mean, what exactly is a graviton particle? I'd like a jar of those, please, for our science center. Mm -hmm. You know, you could also try to deny photons by uh, saying, I want a jar of photons. Put a whole lot of photons in a jar and, uh, you know, we'll put that in a science center. Some things just can't be contained like that, Kent. Graviton particle, been postulated. Ah, okay. It's included in the five standard string theories. Whoa, five standard, okay. For the quantum field theory perspective, 
from the graviton arises as an excitation of the gravitational field. String theory, of course, postulates it arises in the spectrum of a closed string. Oh, has anybody ever run into one of those strings when you drive under a tree limb? You know, if I was dealing with anyone else, I'd be able to give some kind of witty response here, but somehow Kent has just destroyed my ability to even be able to think. Like, the thing is, he's not even operating on a level that you would have to operate on to even be able to begin to grasp these kinds of concepts. It feels like he's being willfully ignorant. This is a 70-year-old man who appears to only have the cognitive ability of a 7-year-old. Or well, maybe not even that. Mass certainly gives rise to a gravitational field. I agree, the more massive the object, the more gravity is, right? I, I, under I can understand how to measure it and what it does, but what is it? Is there a string between here and the moon? Is that part of the, st it's invisible string and you can drive right through it, don't feel it? What if somebody cuts it? <sighs> Bye moon. Okay, so it appears that Kent Hovind has confused string theory for Bill Gates' silly string theory. Anyway, when it comes to strings and string theory, they are multi-dimensional and very tiny. I don't fully understand it myself. But the thing is, I'm not out here going, why haven't they figured out what causes gravity? I just accept that, yeah, it takes time to figure this stuff out. Okay, so what is gravity? What holds the nucleus together? What holds the world together? Let me summarize. We have no idea. Okay, so what was that whole thing that we went through just before if it wasn't what we understand about it? You know, we do actually have ideas about this stuff. It's called the standard model. Just because you choose to ignore it doesn't mean that we don't understand this. Where these four forces come from? What exactly are they? What is it again that keeps these protons together? They're positively charged. Let's see, Colossians. He is before all things. By him, all things consist. That's the best I can come up with. Jesus, hold it all together. Ha. Huh. This isn't worth it anymore. Okay, so the penguins told me that I don't have a choice and they wouldn't let me leave. I guess I'm stuck doing this then. I'm telling you, this is what happens when they don't allocate you any corgi breaks anymore. Anyway, I guess I should probably give what thoughts I can muster on that last bit then. So when it comes to when scientists say that they don't know something, they're being honest with that because there are a lot of things that scientists don't know. It's hard to figure out what the universe is actually like. Yes, there are things that science doesn't have the answer for, but here's the thing, Kent. You don't have the answer either. You just pretend like you have the answer. And here's the thing, it's not even a case of, oh, your guess is as good as theirs, because it ain't. If a scientist makes a guess, then they have to be able to test it. If you can't test your guess, then it's useless. But anyway, there is more to Kent's video, but oh, I'm not doing any more. I was not prepared for that. You see, I've heard Kent say some wild stuff before, but this takes the cake, honestly. Anyway, leave a like and subscribe if you like this video, and leave a comment letting me know what you want to see for future videos. Once again, thank you to Skillshare for sponsoring this video. I feel like it's very much needed. It's kind of like an antidote in a way. So don't forget to join with the link in the description to get your free month. Anyway, I will see you in the next video. Between you and me, thank you for watching.